I can tell you one thing. Uh, if Brian Dable stays, Juan Castillo will go. Right? So if, if they come to Dable and they say, listen, we don't feel like you're performing at the level that this offense needs to perform at. We feel that it's you. What can we do to help you? And he says, my offensive line coach, he's got to go. Offensive line coach and running running game coordinator. He's got Subscribe now! Right? We, we always talk about coaches will fire coordinators before they fire, before they get fired, right? So you have to imagine the same thing's going to go down the line once an OC or a DC is getting their job put on the line, right? So if I had to, if I had to look at one person to let go from the offensive staff and it's not Brian Dable, let's say we're, we're nope, the, the staff believes in Brian Dable. Things have gone well enough given the cast of characters that he was given. They feel comfortable moving forward with him for whatever reason that is. Who's the next coach to go? It's Juan Castillo. He's got to. It doesn't make any sense, though. It doesn't make any sense. For the reasons you're giving excuses to Dable, Castillo has just as many excuses. I don't have any wide receivers. That doesn't They're putting eight in the box on me. Yeah. What do you want me to do? But wide receivers aren't his problem. You've, You've... Yes, right. they are. No, it's he's the run game coordinator. I know he's the run game he's coordinator, the but you game. have to be able to – if you have nobody to stretch the field or get guys out of the box, how are you supposed to design run plays? The Five guys to block eight. You can't do it. So if you're if you're Dable and they tell you, you have, there's one person on your staff that you have to change, otherwise it's you. I know. Who's I the understand. Name, who's the name that you put on the I block? understand the business of it. Really, I do understand the business of it. But bringing in a new run game guy – O-line coach, you really think that's going to help? I mean, we let me because I talk about parallels all the time. We yeah. talk about parallels. Mike Zimmer just hired or just fired Nick Filippo. Yeah. Okay, Zimmer, defensive-minded head coach, came off of the Parcells tree. Yep. Yeah. He fell off the Parcells tree. Okay. Hard. They didn't run the ball enough. No. Which he wanted Nick Filippo to, run, to, to to run the ball more. He didn't. They had a stinker in Seattle. He gets fired. You got another defensive-minded head coach. Not he's from the Reed tree, though, so he's not. Right. He's not. It's not the same. He's not. Uh, he's not scared of passing. He right. doesn't care if he passes. So, you know, he, now he's got Dable, who he handpicked, and he's coming in here, and he's not doing. They're not running the ball. His defensive-minded head coach. They're not running the ball. Now they have no running backs. You fire the running backs coach now because no, none of your none of your running backs is going to have 100 yards rushing. Here's the reason why. I or think, a thousand yards. Here's season. the reason why I think Juan Castillo's on the block is because Juan Castillo was here last year with Dennison. Okay. You've admitted the mistake with Dennison, right? Yeah. Is Castillo on the staff because Dennison brought him, or is Castillo on the staff because that's who the staff decided would be the best offensive line coach that was available? Castillo. Let me double check. Let me fact check myself on that. <laughs> okay, are you ready? No. First off, uh, Juan Castillo uh, was part of the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. He was an offensive assist- assistant, 95-96. Mm-hmm. Tight ends coach, 97. Offensive line coach, 98 through 2010. Defensive for, coordinator for who? 2011-2012 for the Eagles. So... Get this. So he was a defensive coordinator for for the Eagles from 2011 to 2012, but he was an offensive assistant or position coach from 95 to 2010. So he was on the offensive side of the ball, then took over as defensive coordinator in 2011 to 2012. When he left? Went to the Ravens. Went, no, no, no. Went, went to the Ravens? Went to the Ravens in 2013. As a defensive coordinator? As a run game coordinator. An offensive line coach. Wait, he was a DC in Philly, though, right? He was a DC in Philly after McDermott left. After McDermott left. Okay, or was fired. Right. Don't you see what's happening here? He had all that time with McDermott. That's what. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's McDermott's hire. It's not. He will fire Dable before he fires Castillo. And he was here 2017 as the offensive line coach and run game coordinator. So he was here with Dennison. That's when he came. But he has a long history with McDermott. Yes. 
in today's home. So you think that means the long history with McDermott saves Juan Castillo's job? Well, it's the bullet in the gun, man. But you can see the same thing about David Colley. I know. The Colley will stay there. Tight ends coach for Culley, Culley will stay there. It's the bullet in the gun, man. It's fraternity. His one bullet is Dable. Once he fires that, the focus is on him. Don't you think it's a little... It's, okay. Is that one of the reasons why Dabo got hired? Because as they looked at offensive coordinators, offensive OCs would come in and say, yeah, you know, I've got a great offensive line coach I'd love to bring in. Here's his name. And McDermott and Bean are like, nope, we got we got our guys. You got you have to come in with our staff. So do you think that's why they hired Dabo? Because he had no connections and wasn't able to build a staff. So he was cut him and drop him? I think it's a great point. I love when you go down the rabbit hole. I'm just asking. It just it's, makes me laugh every but time. But it's you do. true. They stayed. Why did they? They stay? had to buy him out of Bama to get him out of there. I know. So that means that they wanted him. Yeah. They For whatever up, reason, they ended up with Dennis. Let's be real. They they ended up with Dennis. Yeah. He was like the fifth guy that they interviewed. They, they ended up with Dennis. <laughs> but they kept his staff and brought Dable in, who wasn't able, who didn't build his own staff, right? Yeah. So, if they go to Brian and say, Brian, listen, how are you going to fix this offense? And he goes, well, I need my own staff. Do you think he gets his own staff? Or do you think he's gone? Your staff's in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> do you think uh, he's gone? I, he might. I don't know. I, I don't, it's, it's so funny. I have to imagine a scenario It's funny where seeing you go down the rabbit hole. Comes. The reason why I say it is because we're starting to get into the inner workings of the organization, which we don't have. We, we're, not, we're not. We are not. We don't have that information. No. We're just going on. Listen. If you're at your job, let's just say you're at your job, and this scenario pops up, okay? You hire somebody from the outside. You got all your pieces in place. Things are not working out, and the piece you just hired, okay? Now they're saying, well, I need to do this, but I need you to fire these three people. Yeah. Like, no, I've worked with them for 12 years. They know what they're doing. Right. So. But this would be two coordinators that things didn't go very well. No. Dennison and now David. So again, which means Pagula will want more of a say on who comes in next, or do you just clean out that staff entirely, and then you go after somebody like De Filippo and say, "Build your own staff." I'd go after Haley before De Filippo. I don't know about that. You're not signing Diggs and Thielen. No. Okay? And De no. Filippo failed with those guys. Yeah. So what do you think he's gonna do with this roster? You know what I mean? What if What if the Giants fire Shermer? Haley or Shermer, which one would be your guy? Haley or Shermer? Yeah. That's no brainer. Shermer's an excellent coordinator. He's a subpar head coach. Okay. What so, am I hiring him for? <laughs> <laughs> Offensive coordinator. Yes, I would love, he'd be he'd be one of the top guys I would want. I like Haley though. You give Haley a second round running back that's patient. Well, you bring in Haley, you're sure as hell, sure as hell not getting Le'Veon Bell. Just cross that right off the Why? list. No way. Why? No way. Why? Haley left. Bell never played another down for Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was because of Bell. That wasn't because they lost. They lost Haley. That had nothing to do with Haley. I, I like to think, being the straw that stirs the drink, I didn't mean to rhyme there, but the point is, the plays that Haley called were Taylor made for Bell. He got him into space. He got him everywhere. He was there for a lot of that 8,000 yards in 62 games. Yeah, but here's the problem. If you you go and sign Le'Veon Bell, wow, we are in a totally different episode right now. I know. Let's say you sign Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell costs you way more than the contract that he signs. Yes. Because you got to free up the space to get him. Yes. you got to free the roster spots to get him. So you got to let go of McCoy. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to have McCoy and Bell. That's just not going to happen. Not You're not gonna have McCoy. But you can go McCoy. You can go Bell and Ivory. That's fine. That Ivory's not gonna. Ivory's fine. You can go with. You could. You know. You're not drafting a running back at that point. You're, you're not drafting a running back. No. You sign Bell. You're not drafting a running back. No. You, you could free up that second round pick now to draft a lineman. Yeah. Bill solve a lot of problems by signing Le'Veon Bell. Yes. He fixes a lot of problems on the offense. I got to be honest with you. Cycle this back to the to the coordinator conversation my wife asked me something today she said why do injuries seem to be hurting the bills more than like any other team in the nfl 
and I said it's not the injuries. These are not. This is not uncommon for teams to lose players. I said great teams have a great scheme and system that they can cycle their players into and they'll be successful. Mm -hmm. Bad teams depend on only the talent level of the players that are their starters. And then when they get hurt, that pool is thin. The talent of their replacement is not to the level of the starter. So bad teams don't have the system in place to leverage the, the position and scheme to be successful. Like that's the difference between great teams and, and teams like the Bills right now. Injuries are going to decimate the Bills because they're depending solely on the talent level of the players that are in the system right now. It's not the system making the player good. It's the talent of the player making them good. You need to eliminate the talent of the player. Really do. That was beautiful. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Thank you.